Greetings. Welcome back to English 102 Online with Rebecca McCarthy at South Seattle Community College. How are you doing this week? So this week I have you doing some very interesting readings. At least I hope you find them interesting yourself. If you go into the units reading folder, you will find that I'm going to ask you to read part two of 1984, and I'll have a different podcast on that coming up. We're going to do a short review, a summary of Max Weber's idea of power, domination, legitimation, and authority. Now, um, this text I'll talk about a little bit in this particular podcast. I also ask you to watch a video about Egypt, social media acts, and protest. We're going to continue on understanding um, how Little Brother was able to effectively overturn Big Brother in this real-life situation. But first, I want to talk about Max Weber. So let's start there. Now, you'll notice that this particular piece that I'm asking you to read is not something original for me. It's not actually Max Weber's writing either. It actually is a summary of Max Weber's chapter on power, domination, legitimization, and authority. And it's written by uh, Dr. Paul Greenwich, Ginwich, sorry, from the University of Regina um, in Canada, and it was written for a Sociology 250 class, and it was last updated October 7th, 1999. Now, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel, and this summary, summary of Max Weber's theory is quite excellent, but I happen to have um, Max Weber's chapter on this topic. So if you find this information interesting and applicable for your final paper, please make sure to get a hold of me and I will find a way to have you hooked up with the original text so that you can use it as research in your final paper. Now let's talk a little bit about power domination legitimation and authority. Max Weber is um, a little bit concerned about how domination becomes legitimate. What are legitimate forms of domination and and what are the ways in which we use uh, power in order to gain authority and have people follow us and listen to us. One of the things uh, that we have here is this definition by Max Weber. And Max Weber was a sociologist, by the way, in case you're curious. And he writes that domination is the probability that certain specific commands or even all commands will be obeyed by a given group of persons. So there is an expectation that genuine domination uh, applies to that people will at least voluntarily comply to the rules. Now, they may do so because they want to, they may do so because they feel compelled, and they may do so because they're trying to offer obedience, but there is some form of minimum voluntary compliance, and that's really important. Now, when we think about power and domination, especially as we are reading 1984, we're probably thinking a lot about governments, but remember, all of this information in some ways is generic. It's in the sense power and how power is manipulated, although it's a little bit easier to look at it when we look at it at a government level. This kind of information is also true for relationships between people, a relationship between a parent and a child, a relationship between an uh, employer and an employee, that all at any time that power is being negotiated, these kind of concerns that we are discussing actually is at play. So just because we're talking often about governments and how governments uh, function power with the people that they govern, that doesn't necessarily mean that these terms and these ideas apply only to that kind of situation. So keep that in mind as you write your paper. It will become very useful, especially articles such as this one. And remember, for your final paper, you are required to use at least four of the resources of the required readings that we have in this class. So think about different ways in which you can apply these readings to your particular topic. Now, so domination then, as far as Max Weber is concerned, legitimate domination means that somehow we are agreeing through some kind of voluntary action to comply with the rules that are being handed down to us. In this summary, um, the good professor actually puts together for us a nice bulleted list of how uh, dominance involves different aspects. So let's uh, briefly go through this bulleted list. One. 
voluntary compliance or obedience. Individuals are not forced to obey, but they do so voluntarily. Two, those who obey do so because they have an interest in doing so, or at least they believe that they have such an interest. This actually, the second uh, point, goes to a term called hegemony, and that's a term we're going to be looking at very soon. But hegemony is this belief or this idea that power and power relationships are maintained because people feel that they're getting something out of the deal. I feel that I'm getting something out of the deal with my current government, and so therefore the hegemic relationship between me and my government and the power relationships that exist still is because I am having some kind of vested interest in the arrangement at hand. Okay? The second bulleted list is a belief in the legitimacy of the actions of the dominant individual or big brother or the group. And this is kind of an authority, right? So we believe that a particular claim to legitimacy is also a significant degree in according to the kind of validness that the person has in their authority. We'll talk about that a little bit in a moment here. Compliance or obedience is not haphazard or associated with a short-term social relationship, but is a sustained relationship of dominance and subordination so that regular patterns of inequality are established. Let's listen to that again. Compliance or obedience is not haphazardly or associated with short-term social relationships, but is a sustained relationship of dominance and subordination so that regular patterns of inequality are established. Indeed, what we have here is a habit. A habit of inequality, a habit of the power relationships is established, and within that habit there is an acceptance. For example, in 1984, we see that the party is actively creating a habit of abeyance through the youth party, right? They are training the youth party, this, this group of people who spy on the adults, right? They are training this new generation to have a habit of the power relationship itself. So this is a really important element. Now, Max Weber um, offers us three different types of authority, and this will probably be very helpful for every single one of you and all of your papers. The first kind is traditional authority, and this is the type of authority where the traditional rights of a powerful and dominant individual or group are accepted. The examples that uh, we are given are religious forms of authority, sacred forms of authority, spiritual forms of authority, the idea of God, the idea of the Bible. These uh, we tend to follow because we agree with the authority itself, and certainly there are lots of habits involved with following this particular authority. The next kind of authority is charismatic authority, and Webster defines charismatic authority as resting on devotion to the exceptional sanctity, heroism, or exemplary character of an individual person and of the normative powers or orders revealed by or ordained by him. Now, when we are talking about revolutions and revolutionary leaders and also 1984 the textbook and other totalitarian governments including North Korea we often see this charismatic authority happening and let's connect this idea back to the idea of omnipresence right we talked about that a little bit last week this idea that the character that the person is so much larger than life that he or she the leader takes on almost a godlike attitude and that they are present everywhere, that they are present in all fabric of the country, of all fabric of the relationship. And so this is a very interesting form of leadership. So keep that in mind, especially if you're going to be looking at some totalitarian government or relationships between power. Finally, there is a legal or rational authority. And this is authority or legitimate domination resting on rational grounds, resting on a belief in the legitimacy of enacted rules and the rights of those elevated to authority under such rules to issue commands. In a sense, you could say that we try to project the United States of America as being a form of legal and rational authority, which is why we often allow leaders to uh, change places every two to four years, right? So our leaders might be charismatic, that is, we might 
kind of elect them because of their charismatic nature, but really the authority itself, the authority of the presidency and, and most of our ruling offices in general, rests on this idea of legal or rational authority in itself. So when you're reading this short article, I want you to consider these three different forms of, of, of authority. And I also want you to consider what it takes to have legitimate authority. And when you are looking at your paper, I want you to be able to find what category that your topic falls under and how you can actually apply this particular reading to your own paper topic. Now let's move really briefly to Egypt and social media again. Now I'm asking you to watch this short video. And while you're watching this video on the uprising of the Egyptian revolution, I want you to consider the ways in which Little Brother used social media in order to turn the tables on Big Brother and what Big Brother tried to do to prevent it from happening. Now there are lots of things that they try to do at the very last minute, the government that is, in order to stop the revolution. Uh, a lot of the things they tried to do was not successful however. So take some time and investigate that thoroughly. And that's it for this week and this week's uh, podcast on a couple of the readings. I'll have one more podcast coming on uh, 1984. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the board and shoot me an email if you have any questions. Until later, goodbye.